Um, so I am going to ask Josh. Josh, I think you probably want to mute um, others. I'm not sure if that matters, but probably want to mute everyone except for me. Um, and um, Josh, if you could also be admitting folks um, into the Zoom, let me know if, if that will be a problem. So welcome to our slightly new format and happy Juneteenth, everybody. Be saying more about that as well. Um, so Juneteenth, Juneteenth commemorates the official ending of enslavement of black people in our nation. But more than an ending, it marked the beginning, the beginning of a long walk to freedom in which every one of us is needed as an active participant. When we call upon the angels of peace, when we sing Shalom Aleichem in just a moment, I like to think that we're reminding ourselves to be angels of peace, to be active participants in bringing peace and all of the values upon which it depends, equality, justice, and compassion to this world. May this Shabbat strengthen us for the journey. And as Jethro plays, uh, Shalom Aleichem, I invite you to start taking those deep breaths to enter into this sacred time. And just notice how you're feeling, notice, notice how your body feels, notice whether your breath is shallow or deep. If it's shallow, really try to deepen it as we go into Shabbat time together. reminder that the prayer book is online. It's in your newsletter. It's on our website if you'd like to follow along. It's nice to see you, Sophia. I love this, that I can see some people, people who are here on Zoom. I'm so glad to be with you, whether you're here on Zoom or on our website or on our Facebook page. No matter where you are coming from, I'm really glad you're here. We all need Shabbat more than ever. So let's remind ourselves to be messengers or angels of peace in this world as we sing Shalom Aleichem. And we'll sing in the book on page 24. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi
Welcome to those who have just joined us. We're so glad to be together. If you haven't already, don't forget to take those deep breaths with which to enter Shabbat. And going to light candles now and feel free, of course, to join with us or um, maybe you'll light candles later if that's your practice. So as we do the customary three waves bringing the flame toward us, I again invite you to think of something you're missing, an experience, a person, and bring that person right into your heart to help strengthen your soul and your heart and replenish you this Shabbat. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher kirshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu Let's go into Psalm 96 on page 13 with everything we will sing and pray tonight. Bring your voice into this virtual space however you can. We want this to be as participatory as possible, just like when we're in person, and not to feel like a show. Um, we all want to be active participants. We're joined by my son, Ami, on guitar, I'm sorry, on violin, and my husband, Rabbi Jethro Berkman, on guitar. And we're on page 13, if you're following along. ourselves here so we can make room for everybody. So I'm going to share my screen and everyone who's coming in from wherever you are will be able to see it. 
because tonight I want to sing Ana Bechoach again, Koach meaning strength. Please strengthen us. Tatir Tserura, please God, untangle our knots. Whether the knots are spiritual or physical, whether they're in your neck, your jaw, I've got all of them. Um, wherever your knots are, a plea for a loosening and opening and therefore a strengthening. We need all the strength we can we can receive this Shabbat in order to bring that strength out into the world. So I'm going to share my screen with you now so that you can have the words and never mind. Uh, just one moment. I need to pull it up, but the words will be here. And I invite you as I'm pulling up the screen just to really notice whatever knots you are holding right now and breathe into them. If you do yoga, then you're used to that. Breathe into those knots. And I'm gonna share the words now. We're not gonna sing all the words. We're gonna sing the first, uh, just the first two stanzas here. Anna bechoach bechoach Gedulat yemincha yemincha Hatir serura haberinat amcha Sadveinu toreinu nora Anna Going to move us now into greeting the bride, the beloved of Shabbat. Shabbat as beloved. We're on page 20 and 21 in the book if you're joining us. And we'll sing verses 1 and 2, 5 and 9. When we get to verse 9, we'll rise and we'll bow as we face the core. <laughs> Verse 5. 
of Shabbat is feeling the love, feeling welcomed by us. So let's turn to that central piece of what it is to be Jewish and live Jewishly, a sense of awe, a sense of gratitude. I'd like to invite those who are on Zoom can share in the chat. I'm also going to try to take a look at the Facebook chat. Um, if you'd like to share with me anything that you are feeling particularly awestruck or grateful for, and sometimes those are the same thing. I will start us off by sharing that this person here, my son Idan, finished his kindergarten year. He is done with kindergarten. And this person over here, Ami Berkman, has completed elementary school. He has graduated from, fifth, look, you're getting so many cheers. He's graduated fifth grade and will go, be going on to middle school. And tremendous amount of shock and awe and have a lot of gratitude for that. Um, so let's see. Uh, do we have any awe or gratitude we want to highlight from the chat? Any of you who want to share? Um, go ahead. I think there's just so much. People are having trouble choosing. So keep thinking about it. We're going to sing Ma God Lu. Uh, hallelujah, we're going to sing our round. It's at the top of page 342, if you're following along. And just bring to mind and bring to heart um, something that has given you a sense of awe this week. And if you'd like to just sing hallelujah, you can sing that, or you can join me in the words at the top of page 342, which are the words of Psalm 92. Alleluia, 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 my God. Oh, <laughs> 
he had some beautiful comments for his health and sunshine and community and um, and sons who are all great dads um, and sons who have done wonderful work. Um, so much awe and gratitude. Let's really harvest that and bring that with us into Shabbat. We're going to transition into the Ma'ariv part of the service with Chatsi Kaddish on page 26. Yit Kadal, the Yit Kadash, Shemay Rabba, the Almadi Rahi Rute, the Amlich Malhute, the Chayehon, Uvio Mehon, Uchaye de Hulbet Israel, Bagana, Bagana. Uvisman Korim, the Yimeru Amin, the Heshme Rabba Mevora, the Alla Mulal Me Almaya, Yit Barach, Yit Barach, the Yishtabach, Yit Barvit Roma, the Yit Nase, the Yit Tarvit Ale. Vitalar Shmeid Kurasha Rehu Leilam in Kol Birchata Shirata Kush Bechata Nechemata Zami Hiran Bielma Eimeru Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit for Barhu, which is on page. 28, and if you'd like to face east, as is customary, you can do that as well. Barehu et Adonai Baruch Adonai Hamevorach Leolam Vaed. Uma avir yo mu me vilaila, uma vdil ben yo mu ven laila, adonai tsvahot shemu, el chai ve kayam tamidim lo chalenu, leolam baed, baruchat adonai, hamarif aravim, blessed are you adonai, who brings on evening. Eternal love, reminding ourselves of this great gift of love, the gift of revelation of Torah, of wisdom to guide and root our lives. Page 32. Torahu mitzvot, hukimu mishpatim, otanu libadeta. Al ken Adonai Eloheinu, deshofeinu, uvekumeinu, nasiach mechukecha. Venismach bedivrei toratecha, uvenitzvotecha. The <laughs> Aruchat Adonai, O Hevamo Israel. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Oh, 
‫בזכות מלכותו לעולם ‫הההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
the generations of the free. Don't waver. Don't let despair sink its sharp teeth into your, your throat with which you sing. Escalate your dreams. Make them burn so fiercely that you can follow them down any dark alleyway of history and not lose your way. Make them burn clear as a starry drinking gourd over the grim fog of exhaustion and keep walking. Hold hands, share water, keep imagining so that we and the children of our children's children may live. With that, we sing our song of redemption. Mihamocha, which we're going to sing this evening as a, in combination with Redemption Song by Bob Marley. We've done it this way for our reggae Shabbat, and we thought it was appropriate on this anniversary of the full emancipation of all slaves. But as we'll talk about in a little bit, freedom and equality are two different things. So we are, if you're following along with the words, we're on page 40. Mi hamocha ba eli madonai mi hamocha le dar ba kodesh no rate ilot o se fele no. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom for all I ever have? Redemption song. to sing Hashki Venu and pray that we lie down to sleep and restore our souls for another day of working for redemption. And then we're going to move into Ufros Alenu and both of these pieces of the liturgy are on page 42. If you're following along. Um, I just need to fix my sound a little bit. top of page 42 and then we will sing Ufros Aleinu Sukkot Shlomecha and as many of you know already this means spread over us the canopy of your peace imagine like a talit spreading over every one of us imagine that you are the weaver of the talit along with everyone on earth working and striving for a more just and compassionate world peaceful world. Everything's 
spread over us that sukkah of shalom. Let us pray we find the strength to create that sukkah of shalom. For the Amidah, going to chant together on page 46, but it's actually a traditional practice to just daven privately, individually, the Friday evening Amidah. And I hope that this will be okay with you. I thought we would give a chance for just instrumental music to accompany us, um, just instrumental music to accompany the Amidah. As we dive in, uh, we pray the words that are in the prayer book online, or if you have a prayer book, or just the words in our heart. Um, and so, uh, but we will pray at first. We will stand, if you're able, rise in body or spirit, and we'll chant, may God open our lips that our mouths may declare our praise for this great gift of life. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufia git tehilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Please take some quiet moments for prayer and reflection. to turn to our prayer for peace on page 
60. Shalom, Rav. Shalom, Rav. to pray for those in need of healing of body or spirit. I know that so many individuals we know and individuals whom we don't know are in our minds and in our hearts when we think about healing and how much healing so many of us need. So if you would like to share a name or names of individuals or groups of individuals, whether in Zoom on the chat or on the Facebook chat, or simply to say them, aloud in your own home to yourself um, or to those with you. I'll uh, give you a moment to do that. And then we'll pray prayer for healing on page 253.
just to highlight some of the names that were expressed. We pray for the full and complete healing of Bob Bruno, Nate Stabler and Claire Rofino, Jeff Cates and Linda Gerstein Weinstein. May all those we hold in our hearts this evening, the Shabbat, know a complete healing, a rifu ashlema, may they know shlemut, wholeness, and rifua, healing. So I'm going to uh, to share also on the topic of healing before I share some words of Torah. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I, this week, um, a member of our congregation called to my attention uh, a kina, which means a lament, that was written by a black Orthodox rabbi who goes by the name Manishtana. And um, I don't know if, if John and Mandy are on uh, tonight, but when I officiated at their wedding they, as a gift, they gave me a book that was written by Manishtana. Um, and I thought that in honor of Juneteenth, um, in honor of this holiday that I don't think the Jewish community has embraced um, much in years past, though we certainly, um, it was an omission. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that we're acknowledging it tonight. And I'm going to share with you uh, the image of a beautiful uh, kina. So the text is a little hard to make out, but I'm going to read it. Thought you might enjoy seeing it anyway. And I think it, it fits with, uh, with what's on our minds tonight. Avinu Shabashamayim, Heavenly Father, Master of Compassion, look down from your holy habitation and bless and shield the community of the African diaspora, whether they are members of the covenant or whether they are not members of the covenant in this country and the world. Be their shelter and stronghold and let them not falter. Rescue them from any enemy or ambush along the way and from all troubles that afflict the world. May the Holy One, blessed be God, have compassion on them and bring them out from darkness and the shadow of death. May God break their bonds, deliver them from distress, and bring them swiftly back to their families' embrace. Hear their pleas, and may there be fulfilled for them the verse, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor shall they learn war anymore. And let us say, Amen. Amen. So kinot, lamentations, are, are typically said on the uh, Jewish day of mourning, Tisha B'Av, but there are certainly modern and contemporary lamentations. Much for us to lament, but also much for us to celebrate. On June 19th, 1865, two months after the conclusion of the Civil War and nearly two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, News of the end of the war and the freeing of the enslaved finally arrived in Galveston, Texas. General Gordon Granger and his Union troops declared on that day, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equity, equality of rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired laborer. From that day forward, June 19th came to be celebrated as Juneteenth. Black Americans did not achieve equality of rights that day, as General Granger said, but freedom was still something to celebrate, while equality is something to fight for. And those words come from an email I received today from the Democratic National Committee. Our tradition teaches us that the equality that must be the goal we who are free must work toward is an ongoing struggle. Just as the world is according to our most ancient creation myths, broken, incomplete, and in need of healing and wholeness through human partnership with God, so too freedom is not complete. Though we celebrate the redemption of our people from enslavement in Egypt so constantly and consistently, every day in our prayers, every time we make Kiddush, we remember Yitziat Mitzrayim, the exodus from Egypt. We remember, we celebrate, we give thanks. But we also must hold and live the truth that our freedom is incomplete. Because in Jewish thought, chirut, freedom, 
is a necessary prerequisite to do the work of justice, compassion, and equality. Freedom isn't the end point. As the last nearly 154 years since full emancipation on Juneteenth have shown us, and the last over 50 years since the end of the civil rights movement have shown us, we are still travelers on and must be active participants in creating a long, long road to equality and justice. One of the many Jewish teachings that serves to remind us that working toward freedom and equality is ongoing is a text we read each Passover. The Talmud teaches us, in each and every generation, a person must view himself as though he personally left Egypt, as it is stated, and you shall tell your child on that day, saying, it is because of this, which the Lord did for me when I came forth out of Egypt, quoting Exodus. In every generation, each person must say, this which the Lord did for me, and not this which the Lord did for my forefathers. So usually we focus on this text, meaning that all of us who've experienced the miracle of redemption, meaning that all of us did experience the miracle of redemption and not just the generation of slaves who were freed. But what if we look at it a bit differently? What if we understand in every generation to mean that in every generation as a society, and throughout our individual lifetimes, we must remember and understand freedom in our bones, not as an intellectual concept, but as something we must continually work for, for ourselves and for others. The in every generation points to the ongoing nature of this work, and it is work. In the Haggadah, in the Magid section, we read, and even if we were all sages, all discerning, all elders, all knowledgeable about the Torah, it would be a commandment upon us to tell the story of the Exodus from Egypt. Dig into this sentence and you can see it is telling us, you will never be finished with this work. You could know everything there is to know, but still you would need to tell the story. Telling the story here means reminding yourself to work for it and doing the work, the continual process of education and action. When we stood at Sinai and accepted Torah, we agreed to an ongoing process of evolving, learning, growing ourselves as we try to manifest the values of justice and compassion in a world that is not always hospitable to those values. When we forget to continue that process, to tend to freedom, that of ourselves and of others, we are not really free at all. Until we are free, none of us are free. Emma Lazarus said this in Epistle to the Hebrews in 1883, calling for Jews to pay attention to the plight of other Jews. But of course, we can, we can and we must extrapolate from what she said until we are all free. We are none of us free. Judaism's three great pillars, creation, revelation, and redemption, have something very profound in common. Each one is incomplete. Each requires every one of us in every generation to be active partners in the fulfillment of each. Creation is incomplete and ongoing. We, as God's partners in creation, we must complete it. Revelation of Torah, wisdom to live by, is incomplete and ongoing. We create and we give and receive revelation of wisdom by engaging with the sacred wisdom that has been handed down through the generations and putting it into conversation with our contemporary lives and values. And redemption, though we were freed from slavery, is incomplete and ongoing. We received our freedom so that we could work for freedom and equality, justice for all. Aleinu, it is incumbent upon us. It is our responsibility to recognize injustice wherever and whenever we see it and resist it, using whatever resources we have. And those resources are not the same for all of us. Some of us may protest, some may donate, some may read, teach, listen, 
Whatever it is that is yours to give, you must help and do the work. We all have a role to play. The last few weeks have brought an uprising of outrage against injustices lack of equality that has existed and persisted in our nation for all these decades. Those of us who've had the privilege to be relatively asleep except for when there's a particular outburst of, uh, of police brutality, of riots protesting it, whenever something makes the news, we might wake up a bit and then we might fall back to sleep if we have that privilege. Those of us who've had the privilege may may have remained that way, hoping and believing that we were much further along in that journey than of freedom, toward freedom and equality, than we actually ever were. Of course, there have been great strides, and having a black president of the United States was certainly one of the amazing developments. But the last few weeks and months have exposed the specific vulnerabilities and inequalities that have been created and sustained throughout so much of the structure of our society, and clearly we have reached a breaking point. Another email I received, many Juneteenth emails were in my inbox today. This one from the ACLU, and it stated, the destruction of black lives and communities has continued long after slavery, and it goes far deeper than policing, from disparities in healthcare and education, to intentional voter suppression, to the COVID-19 pandemic that has magnified these inequities. Because of technology that enables us to see injustice as it is happening, even if it is happening in another state or country or neighborhood, we are all witnesses and must be upstanders in infinitely more instances and ways than ever before. Documented on video, George Floyd pleaded for his breath, his life, while an officer who had been previously reprimanded but had been allowed to continue working knelt on his neck and the others stood by, including one who had also been involved in another instance of police brutality. And anyone who wished could view that video. The new intimacy with injustice due to the instantaneous connectivity with anyone anywhere that we have because of our technology and the incredible stress the pandemic has put on all of us as individuals and as systems, whether it's healthcare, education, our families, the economy, the outrage at the litany of injustices committed by our current president and his enablers in Congress, all of this came together in one moment of combustion and we the people cried out, no more. What can give us hope as we find our place in this unfolding story of ensuring that all people are free? Because until we are free, we are none of us free. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs teaches in his book, To Heal a Fractured World, The Ethics of Responsibility. Optimism and hope are not the same. Optimism is the belief that the world is changing for the better. Hope is the belief that together we can make the world better. What gives me hope? Scenes of thousands of people in the streets of this nation, not just in major metropolitan areas, but in small towns, standing up and marching to say that black lives do matter to all of us, despite the risk to their health in the midst of a pandemic that thrives on crowds. This is a sign of readiness to march forward on the long and unending journey to freedom. This is a sign of hope that we've reached a new stage of development in our, in our work as God's partner in working for justice in this world. What else gives me hope? The New York Times bestseller list featuring several books on black history and anti-racism. The four top New York Times bestsellers this week are called White Fragility, So You Want to Talk About Race, How to Be an Anti-Racist, and another one called Stamped from the Beginning, which is a look at anti-black racist ideas and their effect on the course of American history. Many more are reading up on racism, understanding it in a new way, in a way that implicates all of us in our society to do better. That gives me hope. Signs of hope 
These are signs of hope because being truly free means helping others achieve true freedom. And that means ongoing commitment to educating ourselves and particularly to pushing ourselves out of our comfort zones to ask hard questions of ourselves and our communities, such as how can the freedom of others be more expansive and true than it is? Even if I think everything is relatively okay, is it? What can I do to bring more justice to this world, more freedom and equality to others? So the movement to identify what pronouns we prefer, which I wrote about in my Shabbat message today, actually are a really good example of this. A way of thinking, well, there's a lot of freedoms um, for those who didn't always have those freedoms, but there's actually, there's further to go on this journey. There's ways to make more people feel more included and more free. The Mishnah Pirkei Avot tells us, Lo alecha hamlacha ligmor velo ata ben chorin lihibatel mimena. It is not required of you to finish the work, but you are not free to desist from it. I heard today that someone on Twitter posted that listening and learning is the new thoughts and prayers. May each of us, partners with God in the ongoing process of healing, of learning and living by wisdom, and of using our freedoms to fight for equality for all, may we listen and learn and give to this beautiful and broken world what it most needs from our particular souls in these particular moments. Shabbat Shalom. And with that, we go into Aleinu. It is on us. In this prayer, we say it is upon us to praise the source of all life, but really, this poem envisions it's a dream. It's a, it describes a dream in which all living beings will understand that they are interconnected, that all of humanity will give thanks and praise to the source of all life. So we say, Aleinu, it is our responsibility. It is upon us. And in the book, we're on page 282. Please rise if you're able. Alinu le shabeach la adon ha kol la tet kedula li otser berechit shehun ote shamayim ve yoser aretz umosha vikarov a shamayim hima al ushrina tu zo begofem eromim hu eloheinu ehin od va anachnu korim Umishtachavim umodim Lifnei melech malchei hamlachim Hakadosh baruch hu Venemar vehaya Adonai Lemelech al kol haaretz Bayom ha'u Yom Hahu, Yadonai Echad, Oshemo, Oshemo, Oshemo Echad. And now we have a moment to remember those we've loved. We are missing at this time, at this season, if we are in mourning or observing a yard site. I will ask that you put into either the Zoom chat or the Facebook chat or simply to say on your own, um, those you're remembering, Denise, remembering your father, Leo, may his memory be a blessing. If anyone else would like to bring any names into this virtual space, please do. And we'll be on page 294. Please rise for Mourner's Kaddish. Yit gadal ve yit kadash shemei rabba. Ve alma divra chirute ve amlich malchute. Ve chaye chon u viome chon u vachaye de cholvet Israel. Ve agala u vizman kori ve imru. Amen. Yehe shemei rabba mevorach le alam ulal me al maya. Yit barach ve shabach ve it paar ve it romam ve it nase. Ve it hadar ve it alev ve it halal shemei de kudesha brechu. 
לעילם עם כל ברכתה ושירתה, תוש בחטא ונחמתה, תאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן. ויהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. הוא עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו, אמרו אמן, יעשה שלום, יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו. ועל כל ישראל יעשה שלום, יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל. I want to share uh, just one more piece of liturgy that was uh, composed for uh, to particularly recognize black lives, and of course, including the many black lives within our own Jewish communities. This was created by the Jewish Multiracial Network, which was founded in 1997, and this is called the Black Lives Kaddish. Creator of life, source of compassion, your breath remains the source of our spirit, even as too many of us cry out that we cannot breathe. Lovingly created in your image, the color of our bodies has imperiled our lives. Black lives are commodified yet devalued, imitated but feared, exhibited but not seen. Black lives have been pursued by hatred, abandoned by indifference, and betrayed by complacency. Black lives have been lost to the violence of the vigilante, the cruelty of the marketplace, and the silence of the comfortable. We understand that black lives are sacred, inherently valuable and irreplaceable. We know that to oppress the body of the human is to break the heart of the divine. We yearn for the day when the bent will stand straight. We pray that the hearts our country will soften, hearts our country will soften to the pain endured for centuries. We will do all we must to bind up the wounds, to heal the shattered hearts, to break the yoke of oppression. As the beauty of the heavens is revealed to us each day, may each day reveal to us the beauty of our common humanity. Vinomar, and let us say, Amen. So I'm going to just share a couple of announcements before we make Kiddush and Motzi, and then close with Olam Chesed Ibane. Tomorrow morning I'll be leading a Torah study on the Torah portion, Shlach. Uh, that will be at 10.30, and all are welcome. The Zoom link is in your um, newsletter, your, your email from the temple, um, and you can also access it through your Shul Cloud account. Please let me know if you have any trouble. Um, so that's tomorrow at 10.30. I'm still teaching. We just began our first session of my class, Sustaining Our Souls, Wisdom for Our Times. Um, and this past session was, we focused on a poem by Rilke and we spoke about Psalms. Um, and I think those who were there enjoyed it and found it soul sustaining. So I invite any of you to come to any of the sessions. The next one will be on July 1st, Wednesday from 12 to one. This coming Wednesday at 5 p.m. is our women's Rosh Chodesh group I will be leading. And next Friday, a week from tonight, we have a really special speaker in honor of Pride Month as we come to the end of Pride Month uh, named Mike Moskowitz, who's uh, an Orthodox rabbi who's been very active in LGBTQ um, equality and justice work. So see the website and your newsletter for details on that. He'll be with us um, as our special speaker for the Devar Torah next Friday night. And Rabbi Schaefer will be starting a racial justice reading group that actually he'll be looking at two of the books that I mentioned that have been on the uh, been on the New York Times bestseller list. One uh, he'll be starting on July seventh at seven p.m. He'll be discussing with folks 
who've read the book uh, White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism. Um, and I'm sure it's okay if you haven't read the book, but he says if you're open to difficult conversations and interested in thoughtfully exploring questions or ra of racism and racial justice, please join Rabbi Schaefer for this racial justice reading group, which is open to TOS members. Um, I'm sure there's lots else that I'm missing. If anyone has anything, you can put it in the chat. Um, let's make Kiddush and Motsi, and then we'll sing ourselves out. Um, and I'll say, by the way, that some of us gathered before the service began um, for a little bit of schmooze time, which I thought would be nice just to greet each other over Zoom before we began services. And I'd like to continue experimenting with that model and then also sometimes when we might stay afterwards and be with each other. So we'll have a little more opportunity for interaction. And I'm on page five if you're following along. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagafen Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav eratzavanu Beshabbat kodsho b'yahava uvratzon Inchilanu zikaron lemaasei v'reshit Kihu yom tehila lemikrae kodesh Zecher letziat mitzrayim Kivanu v'acharta Yotanu kidashta Mikol hamim Beshabat kodshecha Yahava uvratzon Inchaltanu baruch at Adonai Mekateish HaShabbat Amen It's funny, you might be able to hear my dog drinking water. She started drinking right after I made the blessing, so she's clearly a very, very religious Jewish dog. I don't think she has wine in her water bowl, though. And we'll make motzi. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Hamotzi lechem min haaretz Amen. Let's sing ourselves out of the service with Olam Chesed Yibaneh. We shall build this world from Chesed, from compassion.
for being with us to enter into Shabbat. May this Shabbat serve to sustain and strengthen your soul. Please be in touch with me as always. I'd love to hear from you. I'm available to meet all during the week, um, to meet by Zoom or phone, and feel free to be in touch over email. I know Rabbi Schaefer also is, uh, would love to be in touch as we continue to try to stay connected even while physically distant. And I'd like to thank again Rabbi Jethro Berkman for the musical accompaniment and also to thank two-thirds of my children, Ami and Idan, for joining us as well. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Yashikok, Rabbi. Thank you, Larry. Happy, happy Father's Day, Jethro. <laughs> <laughs>